you can see that these are little pistols. I mean, take a look at these little guys. They are super into movement. Got another little girl right here. Ooh, doggy. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. We're gonna have some fun today for sure. Of course, we've got some little baby leucistic monocle cobras. Look at that cute little monkey. And we actually have five little babies that a friend of mine has and we wanna sex them out today. So I figured we'd go ahead and show you guys the safest technique for actually sexing cobras because, hey listen, if I was to pin its head, grab its head, and try to avert a tummy pain, that's obviously pretty dangerous because I'm putting my hands in all kinds of jeopardy. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get a tube and we're gonna just put them in the tube so the hardest part with this is just getting him to go in the tube. So what we want to do is just get him to the point where he wants to climb in this tube. And it's going to take a minute. It's just kind of a, a, an act of patience here. Just keep on going like this. And it's so hard not to want to just like pick him up and put him in the tube. But the fact is you have to just be careful. We'll get him. Patience is key. It's okay, buddy. There it is. So now we got him, see? So check it out. Now he's in that tube, he can't get to me at all, right? So this is the, the technique that you basically wanna do. So let's go ahead and sex him out. Now that we have the cobra in the tube, it's really pretty simple, because as you can see, uh, there's no way that it can bite me, right? So now I can just do the same thing I do with all my snakes and avert the hemipenes. Right here you can see, that is a little boy right there. That's as easy as it gets and safe as it gets. So the tubing technique, not only for averting hemipenes, but whenever you have to service the animal, this is the way to go. If you have to treat it, you put it in a tube. That way you're never kind of holding it because as soon as you try to grab that thing's head, now you're getting into a position where you could potentially get bitten. This is the safest way. So one down, four to go. All right, so my number two animal here, we're gonna see if this is a male or a female. And that is a little girl right there. So there you go. And again, you can see that with it being in the tube like this, there's nothing I can do. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this hide box back in here and I'm just gonna go ahead and let it climb right out of the tube and into that box. Again, I wanna do things as safely as I possibly can. And that way you're never in any jeopardy, right? I mean, my hands never came close to that and obviously, we have a perfect sexing ability. So how awesome is that? And again, everything that you want to do with these guys, you want to think about the, the less you get close to touching these animals, the better it is in all honesty, you know, because these guys are really short, which means that their strike range is pretty close. If you were to get on that tail, it can turn around pretty quickly. So in a perfect world, I'd probably try not to touch this animal at all. Now you can tail it and you can use the hook. You can do stuff like that. The fact is, is you'd really prefer not to if you don't. And you can see that these are little pistols. I mean, take a look at these little guys. They are super super into movement and you have to be super careful but now listen if you can get it crawling now I can put the tube in front of it and hopefully I can get it to crawl right into the tube again it's just a matter of patience and as soon as they go in now you got them now it's easy I tell you what this is a this is a definitely an exercise in patience and awesome I mean this is so freaking cool so okay we've got another sex here Got another little girl right here. Ooh, doggy. I tell you, it's just kind of cool to be able to actually touch a venomous snake like a cobra like this when it's in the tube. And no, there's no way you can possibly get bit because it's in that tube. It's just awesome. So again, I'll do the same thing. Just put that right there. We'll just let this little mama climb right in. Watch. Oh my gosh, how awesome is that? Oh my God, I'm having such a good time guys. These things are so absolutely adorable. So, so far we have a male and two females with two more to go. I, I'll be honest with you, when I started this, I wasn't sure how easy it was gonna be. And uh, it's actually been pretty easy. I'm, I'm loving this. And of course, you know, little monocle cobras are, are pretty intense animals. And there's a lot of venom going on there in the sense that, you know, a lot of times the lapid bites can be what they call dry bites. But for whatever reason, babies oftentimes don't do dry bites. So when they juice you, they juice you usually pretty good. At least when you have an adult cobra or a taipan or something like that, a lot of times their bites are dry bites. With babies, you have to be really careful. So a lot of people think that they actually have more venom than the adults. It's not that case at all. What it is is that they're more willing to pump you with venom, right? And they basically juice you every time. For whatever reason, the bigger the animal, they'll actually reduce the amount of venom that they push into, almost like they're conserving it for when they really need it. And again, you can see I'm just using the hook to move things. I'm not 
picking the box up without the hook. And basically what you want to do is a lot of times it's going to be really hard to get these guys to go in the tube when they're hooded up like this. But when they start to crawl, that's when you're going to get a chance to get them hooded up. And we'll just see if we can't get them to crawl in here. There you go, little buddy. There you go, little buddy. He's striking, that's for sure. But he doesn't want to go. So it's, he'll start to flight eventually here. And when they start to move, that's when you can actually get them in the tube. Jeez, just a little, there he goes. Now I can actually just get him on the tail just a little bit. There he goes. And there we go. So that's pretty simple. I'm getting the technique down, right? <laughs> I tell you what. So all right, let's see what this little monkey is right here. All right, it looks like it's gonna be a boy. Yep, so you got two hemipenes there. And again, in the tube, completely safe. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just again, repeat the same thing over and over again, right into this box right here. Bam. All right, so far, no incident. It's been pretty simple, to be honest with you. So one more baby cobra to mess with. Oh my God, I absolutely love these guys. How amazing is that? And the last little baby so far. Let's go. Pretty little dude. Oop, it's underneath the paper. I'm gonna just take this out real quick. And there it is. The feisty little monkey as always. Look at these guys. Gosh, they're so gorgeous, aren't they? How incredible. Come on, little dude. Come on, little dude. You're okay. I know. Hmm. All right, come on, little buddy. Come on, little buddy. Come on. Come on. There he is. All right, there we go. Okay, last one. It looks like we got another little girl. So it ended up with 2.3 of these guys. So two males and three females. I'm gonna go ahead and put the paper towel down, arrange the cage 100% before I put it back, obviously, and just let it go ahead and crawl right on in. There it is. No drama at all. I mean, how awesome is that? And again, the little guy is spicy little dude. That is absolutely incredible. So we've got two males and three females. And uh, hey, listen, I'm never gonna tell you that I'm a venomous expert, but I have been messing with venomous my whole life. So that is kind of the easiest and safest way that you can possibly sex these animals. I hope that uh, you guys learned, but I gotta tell you, please don't go out there and try this technique without someone that's already done it. I've actually been around a bunch of people that have tubed animals, whether it's for sexing, whether it's for treating and so on like that. So I've seen a lot of it. I've been involved with a lot of it. I've been down to Venom Labs, down in Florida, Australia, and stuff like that. So I cannot tell you, I don't want you to go out there and say, oh, now I can sex cobras. I, I mean, I don't know where you get a cobra to do it anyways, but the point is, is please be safe, be smart, don't be silly about it. And uh, that is basically how you do it, where you don't put yourself in danger. You might be asking, why do we have a bunch of cobras here uh, sexing them out anyways? Well, the truth is, Bruce and Jessica actually have a female. They were looking for a male, so we needed to find a male. And we chose this little monkey here that we're gonna just leave a little fuzzy and we've let it go for the last few hours and Bruce just wants to see if it's gonna eat. We don't know if it will or not, but nevertheless, just wanted to explain why we had a bunch of Cobras here is because this cute little dude is gonna be one of your pets, right? Oh, but, yeah. but make sure you're safe because uh, we're open on the weekends. We don't need you to be missing work, all right? Oh, well, you know, if I call him sick, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's gonna be safe. He, he's experienced and stuff like that. But just so you guys know, that's why we have the Cobras here. How we say, that if you're gonna start to handle venomous snakes, oftentimes it's a great idea to get some non-venomous snakes that act kinda like venomous snakes. This yellowtail Kribo is a great example of a snake that acts a lot like a, a cobra or an elapid. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna get your, your experience in with a snake like this. If you get comfortable handling and reading an animal like this, so when it comes back on you, you know how to move, how it's moving. You gotta remember, a venomous snake is the same as a non-venomous snake, it just has venom glands. So they oftentimes act very similar. And there's certainly things like Kribos like this, that act kind of like a Taipan, or maybe even a little bit like a Mamba, although nothing quite acts like a Mamba, and certainly acts like some Cobras as well. So you can see it's kind of hooding, it's kind of doing things, and I'm just gonna move around. Now, the consequences for getting bit by something like this aren't that bad, right? So if you do get bit, hey, 
life goes on. But if you get bit by a cobra or a taipan, the consequences are much worse. Now, I'm not saying that once you master holding a snake like this, you should run out and get venomous snakes. I'm not saying that at all. I've said this a million times. You should have a mentor and work with them and work with those venomous snakes where maybe for six months, a year, you might be working with venomous snakes and actually never totally touching a venomous snake and then slowly work your way through. Again, I've said it a million times. I'm no venomous expert, but I've been handling venomous snakes since I was 17 years old. Now that doesn't mean that I somehow can be a cowboy and stuff like that. And you notice that whenever I'm handling a real venomous snake, I'm trying to do everything I can do to not get bit. I'm not taking unnecessary risks with animals if I don't have to because there's no badge of honor for getting bit by a venomous snake and it only hurts the community. But again, if you want to use a snake like a Kribo or even a Coach Whip, these are all snakes that kind of act very much like a Lapid and you can get a little bit of experience with those guys and then eventually you'll be better equipped if you ever do handle venomous snakes in the future. But I tell you, by the way, I absolutely love this Kribo. And the fact that it's non-venomous, I know I don't have to worry about getting bitten, but this guy, if I give an opportunity, he's gonna take a pop at me for sure. So what a gorgeous snake. You know, I've always said that I kind of never feel more alive than when I'm dealing with something that's deadly with a snake. I mean, I don't know what it is. It's not a macho kick. It's not like, oh, look at me, how cool I am. It's just that that's when you laser focus. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. We were watching that movie Free Solo where the guy like climbs up El Capitan with out ropes absolutely crazy and me and Noah were both like oh my god this is insane we we're watching it together and there was this one part where the guy said that every move he makes has the consequence for potentially falling and dying. And I kind of looked over and I said, yeah, I kind of know what that guy feels like. And Noah was like, what are you talking about? You don't know what he means. And I said, if you think about it, it's the same thing when you're dealing with a venomous snake. Every move you make has to be calculated. You have to kind of be thinking one step ahead of that snake so that there's never any issues. And that means you have to be unbelievably focused. Everything else kind of melts away, right? All the problems of the world that might be on you just kind of go away because all you think about is what's happening in that that moment and that's the rush but again I never want to encourage people to do that because I don't want anyone to get hurt make sure if you want to work with venomous snakes like I had mentioned get a mentor spend some time really put in the hours because the hours that you put in not only with non venomous snakes but also with venomous snakes will keep you safe nothing worse could happen than you or anyone that deals with venomous snakes getting bitten because all it is is bad press and let's face it snakes already get enough bad press these are amazing animals whether it's a non venomous ball python or the deadly black mamba they're still unbelievably incredible but we have to give them the respect that they deserve my saying has always been don't fear it respect it and that's what i try to do with these animals but i absolutely loved it what a great day it was i'm ending the vlog i'm wishing you guys an amazing day you guys are incredible and i love you be kind to someone and i promise i will see you guys tomorrow <laughs>